it had a Greek wave on the ceiling, which we didn't see until we looked really closely on a really bright sunny day. And you could barely see the original stencil paint through the paint that had been painted over it. And so that one we're replicating. And for the other, because I love roses, and the roses on Mount Olympus were a thing in ancient Greek poetry, especially if you read any, any of the poetry of Sappho. She wrote um, in praise of the rose. She called it the queen of flowers. And so anyhow, I'm doing roses. And to make it a little more magical, I decided I'm going to do blue roses. They don't actually exist in nature, but they're going to exist here on my wall. And to do this, I have to repeat over and over and over again, like with all the stencils. This particular stencil with the leaves of the roses I got through the mail from England. It took forever to get here, and the shipping was ridiculous, but I think it was the right choice. So what I'm doing now, now that I've got the, the leaves up, doing a darker green for the veins and the leaves. And then I'll do the, the roses on the leaves. Complicated. You know, there's a funny idea. I don't know who started it, but there's a funny misconception that goes around that Stenciling was somehow a cheaper alternative to wallpaper for people who couldn't afford wallpaper. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, only maybe, maybe in a few cases. But uh, for the most part, if you look at a building like the Iowa State Capitol, especially the law library in the Iowa State Capitol, which is absolutely gorgeous um, and has stenciling all over the place, along with imported marble <laughs> and a lot of decoration. That's not cheap stuff. Um, this wasn't just a cheap alternative. This was just a different way of doing things. And what it comes from in neoclassical architecture and design is it is, there, there were paintings and especially mosaics in the classical structures in ancient Greece and ancient Rome. And so this is a nod to the old mosaics that used to be in the pagan temples. And the frescoes. And the frescoes, especially the frescoes. If you look at pictures of Pompeii, they're beautiful frescoes. Um, and so that's what the stenciling is evoking. And, you know, it was being done at the same time people were doing wallpaper. It's just that it was a different design choice that went with different things. The wallpaper is a little more appropriate for, say, an East Lake house that had a lot of influence from William Morris. And the stencils are more appropriate for neoclassicals. There is no one-size-fits-all when it comes to historic houses. Because anytime you visit, there's always going to be different tastes and different things that go with di different things that go with different styles. using 
to do this are actually brushes for painting little models, like the people who do D&D &D use, or people who make model airplanes. And they go from size 5 to size double zero, being the smallest one. And it's the double zero I'm using to paint the detail work on these. Which is the detail work being the, the null space between the holes in the stencils. It's what everyone wants to use to paint their walls with because it goes ever so quickly. The other thing these are useful for is getting the tiny little crevices where the paint, where the, um, where the tape was when I covered up the woodwork, when I did the big broad strokes. In, this, in the case of this room, it was pink. So, so that leaves little, little tiny bits that I then have to go over and fill in with little tiny paintbrushes. exactly the perfect vines for the pattern that goes around the room. It's actually three different stencils. There's the vine stencil, which is this one, and then one small portion of the arch stencil, which is actually, if you look at it, it's the same stencil that I used for these, but I didn't want this, only this, all around the room. I'm just using this one rose off of it. And then the other one is one rose out of a page of stencils. down the stencils after each impression so that you don't get a bunch of paint cake on it, which makes it hard to use the stencil. for stenciling that they 
wrote in the 19th century. They told the painters to go back through and paint these support struts by hand. It's interesting to note <laughs> that the original painters of this house didn't do that very much. <laughs> but in the rooms that I'm doing from scratch, I am going with the official instructions. But I do think it looks better. Makes them pop a little more in it. Makes it look a bit more realistic. Gabriel, what's your what are your feelings on stencils? Well, I think that they're clearly much more of an individual design and decoration than anything mass produced like wallpaper. And I think that it's rather nice to have such a utterly unique decoration in the rooms. I especially like this one because this is fitting for Sarah, who loves roses, but it also involves an element of what we were able to reproduce with the original stenciling with the Greek wave pattern and going with the, the blue of the wave and the blue that she's done the roses in, I think it just is a beautiful combination. A nice way of putting everything all together. I have to do these in many multi-stage steps because it's really hard to do anything in such a way that I can immediately go right, right over it again and not just smear the paint everywhere. So I have to stop and wait for it to dry pretty darn often. Like if I did these right now, I would be smearing the paint right here. I probably should have started over there, but whatever. <laughs> And in terms of stenciling being a form of decoration in its own right and not, as some people rather strangely say, a cheap substitute for wallpaper, it's worth noting that in Osborne House, uh, which belonged to Queen Victoria and Albert, they had painted ceilings as well. <laughs> Balmoral had the wallpaper, because Balmoral was aggressively Scottish. <laughs> but Osborne House had the paint because it was a neoclassical, more or less. <laughs> I'm sure an architecture student would have a very specific term for it, but it definitely had classical influence. So what I'm doing right now is painting in, if you look real close at a rose leaf, it is not just a flat leaf that has little veins where the sap go through. And those obviously weren't part of the stencil, so I'm just going through and painting those in by hand. And since there are a lot of leaves, it's a lot of things. <laughs> so this is where the tape sort of, sort of overlapped the wall a bit near the woodwork. I'm just Carefully filling in now. Unlike the previous owners who just slathered paint over everything. 